Today we're going to do a little scroll saw basics where we're going to go ahead and attach this template to our pine board there and cut out a welcome sign for uh, my father-in-law's antique slash auction barn. I'm using about a half inch pine. It's just some stuff, uh, some blue stain that we ran on our sawmill. Leftover scraps I pieced together and then planed down. And we're going to cut it out on a delta scroll saw there. And after it's cut out, my helper is going to paint it for me. And you can see he's uh, practicing. Can you show me what you painted? What'd you paint? Oh, wow. Good job. It's a door. It is. Good job. Let's get started. There are a lot of different ways to attach your scroll saw templates. On something that's a little narrower, I have this wide tape and I'll just go right over the top of the whole thing and then when I go around the edges it pops free with no residue. I also use contact cement, both the uh, spray variety that leaves no residue and the can variety. The reverse burnishing method just didn't work. Um, I don't know if it's the toner or what the deal is. So I just did the tape method again and I cut a few big blank fields out so my tape could hold it down in the middle and other than that I'll go around the edges and uh, she should be good to go. Probably start here in the middle of all of them rather than starting with the outside edge because the outside edge will always remain stuck down with the tape. For a blade I'm just using your standard Olsen skip tooth. It's uh, number seven and it's what you would use for a little thicker stock. I don't expect to have any troubles with this simply because it's, it's just soft pine. <laughs> what? So, as you can clearly see, I broke my E out. I don't know why I can do super complicated things and then I do something like this and I break it. But, it's a, a not at all uncommon thing to have happen. So what I've got is I got my E here, stick her back into place, hold it for a bit, and then I've got a wedge. And that's just uh, something that was cut off. So I jam it in there, get a Q-tip, clean up my glue squeeze out. And then let it dry. On our welcome sign, I've already, with my help, let the kid kind of stain. And, uh, you know, whenever he's painting, he doesn't know it. You say hi? Can you show how you paint? Show your paint. Painting, do some painting.
He doesn't know it, but his paint is water and food coloring. That happens to be a red and blue mix that was supposed to be purple. Kind of turns out of a poo brown. He don't care. But uh, this was just a water food coloring blue mix. We're not necessarily happy with it. It's just not dark enough. And the whole sign out of this pine, it's not going to hold up. I envision it hanging. It's just not going to hold up. So I'm going to put it on a backer, and then I'm going to ring my backer. This, keeping with our, our reuse. Oh. Thank you. Perfect. Keeping with our, our, re, our reuse theme. This is the top of a nightstand. And uh, I think it's Honduras mahogany, though it was fake green patterned up to be oak. 1960s, maybe a little earlier, it was a mix of particle board and veneered plywood. So I knocked it apart with an axe and I just kept the veneered pieces. Uh, it was a shelf in the top. And this is a great source of stock. You know, you just knock apart old stuff. There's no point in buying if you don't have to. And it gives it a really good aged look you're simply not going to fake easily. Good coloring. So all we're going to do here is narrow this up some, frame the picture kind of nicely, and glue it down. You can't even begin to see it, but I've made little marks centering our image on the board, and I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. And I probably won't attach it with anything other than just regular old wood glue and that'll be just fine while that dries and it's gonna take a while because it's cold in here I'm gonna go ahead and make up the picture frame and you'd be amazed what a difference a simple picture frame will make on these types of projects all of a sudden it's not some hokey thing it is stylish and cool so Okay, bud. Hold on. So, I'll get some scrap wood out, mill it to the right dimension, probably put a, a fancy edge on it, stain it, paint it, nail it, and we're ready to go. For my edging, I know the people, I know what they like, and it's oak. So here is a slab of oak. This is dunnage. That is the lumber that's thrown down under good lumber so that a forklift can pick it up. And it's one of those slabs, I've had it forever, and it's really hard to work with. So it just sits on the shelf, and there's a good use for it. But first, we've got to turn rough sawn into finished lumber. Because it's such a gnarly piece, it's probably going to fight me pretty severely. Planer's pretty dull. I'd like to change the blades before I do oak. But that oak is pretty ugly oak so I don't want to ruin a new set of blades. We're just going to see what happens when we throw the two together. Oh, look at the dirt shake. This is going to really be hard on the planer. piece of otherwise free waste wood all cleaned up and ready to go. Now I'm just going to buck it up into the chunks I need for my project.
Loud noises. That has been a very good saw blade. Considering the number of hours it has on it to just push through an inch and a half of oak like that, it's a pretty good combination blade. So here we've switched over to the molding head, ready to make our decorative picture frame moldings. And this is the bead board knife. Here's our picture frame molding. Uh, I didn't mean for it to be quite this deep. I must have bumped it, the saw depth, when I was tightening the knob. Sometimes that turns the whole wheel. I wasn't paying attention. It'll still be fine though. The next step is to paint everything down in here. And the color really doesn't matter. The magic trick will work regardless. And you guys will understand what I mean when you see the final product. So go ahead and paint this. The paint I'm using is an acrylic, and this comes from my classroom. We had uh, paint in cups, and this is left over from the project, and I just dumped them all together. And what's neat is if you don't mix it, it'll give you a rainbow effect on your brush as you paint, and it changes constantly on the wood. So it's the next day. Here is the edge banding for our car picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the planer. Like I said, I cut it a little deep, but it'll be fine. I'm going to run it through the planer until I just take the top off of all these beads. And it'll create a, a very neat visual effect that you don't often see done, but would add a, a bit of pizzazz to a project you're working on. It's a subtle effect, but I like it. Okay. What do you think? Do you like it? Good job. Here's the beadboard stuff where I went ahead and planed it down, just leaving these pinstripes. People wonder how you ever got it in so neat and precise. So it's nicely picture framed. This worked very well. I had two corner clamps holding things even, but other than that, it worked very, very nicely. There's no fasteners of any kind except the glue. The temperature of the shop tonight, glue will take a couple of hours to dry. So this will be it, and the little man and I will head on inside. There we are, with some help from my very enthusiastic son. We've got her dyed up. And what I use for dyes, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, is the old inkjet refill kits. For a while there, you could get them dirt cheap. Um, I ended up with two. They work awesome. Vibrant colors, and they're basically as non-toxic as you can get. 
very permanent, especially after they've been sealed. They are water soluble even when dry, but after they've been sealed and everything, they work great. So that's where we stand now. This definitely has a three year old's flair to it, but yeah. I believe that Grandma and Grandpa will love it.